Hi, I'm Tiffany Domino. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my website is howtoentrepreneur.com and check out my free course. It's a framework to grow a business from idea to full-time income and from full-time income to enterprise. So definitely stop by and check out the free course. So today we'll be talking about how to start an ATM business. So if this is something you're looking into and you want to be one of those people that makes more convenience for local consumers and business owners where they can make it easier for their customers to get access to cash then this is the right place for you so if you're interested in starting an ATM business whether you want to do it for passive income or whether you want to do it um, um, as an active endeavor to just really take your financial security under your own control then this is the right place for you so it's likely if you're interested in how to start an ATM business that you've seen or heard of people who install ATM machines and make nearly passive income from doing so. So you might know some places that could use the added convenience of an ATM machine and you want to tap into the opportunity but you're concerned about the process. So like most entrepreneurs starting a new venture, you're probably concerned about how much money you'll make, what a typical day would be like, what do you have to do to get started? In addition to the normal concerns that are natural for every business startup, you might also have these unique concerns specific to the ATM business, like how do you get the money to fill it? Who fills it? Where do you find the locations to place an ATM? And so much more. And I know the same questions were those that I had before I placed my first ATM a few years back. I remember having a desire to start an ATM business and even locations in mind, but I was so concerned about whether I was doing things right and I didn't want to make a, a mistake that could cost me big time. Since I've been in your shoes before, I know how it feels and I plan to answer all of those questions for you. So this guide will show you step by step how to start an ATM business. If that sounds interesting to you, let's get started. So first let's start by talking about what is an ATM business. So most people who think about the ATM business think about big banks like Chase, Bank of America, or Wells Fargo. But what some people don't realize is there's room for small and medium sized businesses also. So anywhere there's consistent traffic that can use the added convenience of having quicker access to cash is the ideal opportunity for an ATM business owner. ATM business owners place ATMs in locations to make it more convenient for people to access cash. There are several locations throughout the world where there's a desire for cash, but it's not convenient to go to the bank or to use a bank card. For example, when you go to an amusement park, you tend to have your car parked far from where you might be when you want to spend money. And you might see a smaller vendor or a place where you don't feel comfortable using a card. In these instances, it's best to use an ATM if there's one available. So when you use an ATM, in essence, you're borrowing someone else's cash. The owner is enabling you the convenience of having access to your money without leaving where you are and going to a bank. When you withdraw money from the ATM, the owner has given you their cash and has to process the payment through your bank to get their money back. In exchange for the convenience, you pay them a surcharge. Each person who uses the machine is borrowing their money and paying a surcharge as a result. Then once the money is drafted from, their, from the customer's account, then the ATM owner gets their money back and can process the cycle again. So in an ATM business, you'd be responsible to keep the machines operating and stocked with money, receipt paper, and ink, negotiate placement deals with property owners, find locations with a high demand and low supply, and set reasonable surcharge prices. So who is an ATM business right for? The ATM business is good for someone who will be responsible enough to maintain the machines or employ people who will. Those who have a good eye for where the market demand could sustain a, a profitable ATM. 
those who have savings or credit sufficient to buy the machines and start up capital. So what's a typical day in an ATM business like? The ATM business will vary based on how many machines you have, what's the demand with your machines, how much cash you put inside, what's the conditions of your machines and other factors. In a typical day, you'll likely have to make sure your machines are working properly and depending on the models of the machines you purchase, you can check the operations online or you may have to manually visit to inspect the machines. You want to make sure enough cash, cartridge paper, and ink is stocked inside of each machine to support the normal demand in the locations. If maintenance issues arise, which should be rare, you'll have to either resolve them yourself or hire ATM repairmen to fix the issues with the machines. Although it, it is uncommon, or it was uncommon for me, of all the maintenance issues, it was most common for me to get jams in my machines. So when you get a jam, the machine won't be operable. And if you don't have a reputation of quickly fixing the issues with the machines, you can upset your customers, which can include the property owner, and eventually they may stop using the machine, or even worse, forfeit your deal in place of another ATM business. So it's important to resolve maintenance issues in a timely fashion. As an ATM owner, you could run your business full-time, part-time, or as a side hustle, so the day-to-day will vary. Regardless of what schedule and business size you decide, it's still important to divide your time between four general functions, and those are acquiring the work, doing the work, managing the work, and strategizing about the work. And that those four general functions will make sure that if you want your business to continue growing, that it can continue growing. So in the ATM business, if you're acquiring the work, um, this is when you might be looking at the map of an area where you're considering placing an ATM. You might be studying to identify the traffic patterns and deciding on where a good high demand and low supply location may be. This is also where you might be calling the property owners, posting flyers, emailing, or running online ads to gain awareness of your company so people will become interested and potentially do business with you. Um, when you're doing the work, that's when you might be placing the ATM, purchasing a new ATM, refilling the receipt paper, fixing jams, making sure the machine is operable, communicating with property owners to maintain your working relationship, or even networking with potential ATM users near your location. When you're managing the work, um, this is when you're preparing for the days when you may hire. So maybe you you'll want to hire people to do the repairs people to keep the machine stocked or maybe you'll want to hire out the admin tasks like the accounting the legal and the marketing regardless of whether it's time to hire or not you always want to prepare by creating training if you have training it helps you to systemize your processes balance your quality and maintain efficiency even when you have new hires and then strategizing ab about the work. Um, as a new startup, there will be lots of growth opportunities, untapped markets, and processes, uh, process improvements you can make in order to grow your business. But if you don't take the time to think about them, they'll remain hidden to you. So it's important to carve out time to prepare for the future, plan growth, identify weaknesses, identify opportunities, and to take notice of threats. So those are the general four things that you want to do as an ATM business owner. So who is the target market for an ATM business? The target market for an ATM business is the government, other businesses, and the consumers. And let's break that down. So with the government, I can't speak for other governments aside from the U.S. government, but with the U.S. government, they mandate a percentage of their business to small business owners. They do this because they know small businesses stimulate the economy. 
As long as your business has less than 500 employees, it can be considered a small business in the U.S. Then add it to your small business designation. There's even more Pro there's even a more probable chance of working with the government if your business is woman owned, minority owned, or veteran owned because the government is trying to include these populations who are less likely to pursue a business or who are disadvantaged. They're trying to include those businesses into the business sector more. As a result of the mandates within the U.S. government, Small business who build some traction can bid on government contracts to place or maintain ATMs. So when you're working with other businesses, um, the target audience, um, let's talk more about that. So most ATM businesses focus on placing their machines on other businesses' premises. When I placed my first ATM, I noticed there was a large private school and a vibrant community with many businesses that only accepted cash. So I spotted out locations in that area that would be convenient for the majority of the people in that community and I narrowed it down to one corner store. I talked to the owner and personally took time to calculate the amount of foot traffic to the store and negotiated a deal that was better than what he had. The income from that location ranged between four to five hundred dollars per month, but the best benefit was that the store was right across the street from my son's school, so it was really easy for me to inspect the machine and perform any maintenance if it was needed. So like my situation, other ATM businesses find great opportunities to place ATMs in areas where there's a high demand for cash but a low supply of ATM machines. Places like event centers, bars, corner stores, amusement parks, recreation centers, churches, or places like that. Um, places where the businesses don't use credit card processors or they don't prefer to. Places where businesses have a machine or an ATM deal that they're unhappy with. Maybe they pay to lease the machine. Maybe they want an upgraded machine. Maybe they have an old one or other situations like that, or where people may feel a higher discomfort with using their cards for various reasons. So all of these are the perfect situations where you could work with other businesses um, to place an ATM. So when it comes to direct to consumer, the consumers aren't necessarily likely to need one of your machines, but it's still important to keep them in mind. They're the ones who will be using the machine. If they don't feel comfortable, if there's little brand awareness, if they're uncertain about the security, or if there are other objections, it's important for you to take time to warm up the consumers so that they start using your machine. Um, sometimes the machine use will happen more naturally than others, but nowadays many people have experienced fraud or ID theft, and so they may not be as comfortable with using your machine without some explanations. The more brand awareness, the more likely people are to use your machines. So how does an ATM business make money? Uh, well, most people are familiar with the model of earning money in an ATM business from the surcharge. There are more options for monetizing an ATM business. And let's talk about the options. First, with the products, the main way most ATM businesses make their money is from their product, the ATM. They may split the ATM surcharge with the property owner. They may lease the machine for a flat fee, or they may do a lease to own deal where the property owner will become the owner over time. When it comes to services, this is an area that um, is less common to see with ATM businesses, but it is possible. So in addition to renting, selling, or leasing the machines, an ATM business can also charge for services to the machines or to other people's machines. So if you already fill receipt paper and perform maintenance to your machine, you could also get the person nearby who has an ATM machine to pay you to help them out with theirs. If you're leasing to own the machine or if you've sold a machine, you could also have the owners and potential owners 
paying you to service their machine as they're learning to do it on their own. So you can add an additional stream of revenue to your business with services like inspections, routine maintenance, restocking, fixing jams, or even consulting if they have questions or concerns um, that you feel you'll be able to answer. And then another option for monetizing an ATM business is through affiliate partnerships. And so in addition to products and services, you could also get paid from affiliate partnerships. Let's say, for example, you've placed your ATM at a local hotel. You could print coupons on your receipts and get commissions for referring people to relevant products and services the consumers would enjoy. So some ATM businesses charge for ad space on their receipts. If they have enough traffic and relevance, they can prove that conversions would be likely. Alternatively, with affiliate marketing, you could promote products and services, and when consumers use your referral code or referral link, you get a commission for the lead or sale. So talk about another stream of income. Affiliate marketing alone could double or more your income from your ATM business. So there's lots of categories that you can pick to promote um, your ATM business in. Let's take a look at this tool that I like to use to find different opportunities. So like we talked about, there's so many places and options where you could be placing your ATM. Let's say you place your ATM in, in, a, um, in a shopping mall and maybe they have relevant stores inside of the shopping mall where there's clothing and things. So let's take a look at some of the um, clothing affiliate programs that you could be looking into. So um, Forever New Clothing, um, Timberland, you could be getting paid 7% commission from each sale. Um, you have I Love Jewelry, um, Let's see if we can find some more that might be likely to be in a shopping mall. Um, so some of these, it's likely they, they could be, and maybe I just don't recognize them, but um, you can see that there's a lot of choices, a lot of options um, that would be that you could promote and possibly have them on your receipts and then it will be relevant for the people there if they were going to buy from the a store or um, if there's a lot of people who you notice they are um, they're they're um, passionate about certain causes or products or services you can experiment with the different uh, promotions that you put on your receipts and then as a result, um, you can like work on your income and, and work on uh, improving your income through referral marketing or affiliate marketing. So this tool that I'm looking at here, Nine West is another popular one. I know they have locations inside of shopping malls. But um, this tool that I'm looking at here is um, at Wealthy Affiliate. And they teach about affiliate marketing and it's really a very good program that they offer um, to teach you about everything related to starting your website building traffic to your website and monetizing your website and it could actually be useful for you if you are um, considering building a stream of income in addition to um, the direct surcharge income so their tool here you can experiment with it um, you can try out this platform for free if you go to howtoentrepreneur.org slash wealthy affiliate again howtoentrepreneur.org slash wealthy affiliate and it'll bring you here and you'll be considered one of my referrals and when you're one of my referrals then I'm able to coach you and help you to build out your website and monetize your website so I really look forward to meeting you. So, <laughs> um, anyway, let's keep going and talking about um, your ATM business. So, there's options from travel to home decor to making more money. 
Um, there's lots of different companies and products and services that have affiliate programs that you could earn from. So I just showed you my number one recommendation for learning affiliate marketing. And if you're interested in learning about that and how you can use it to monetize your ATM business, then definitely check it out. So um, what is the growth potential in an ATM business? Now, I know a lot of people see the use of credit cards and debit cards, and it kind of makes them think that ATMs will be obsolete at some point. But there's also an increased rise in ID theft and um, different issues with cards and card processing. And so a lot of people still feel comfortable in some circumstances to use cash. So I don't see cash going away anytime soon. Um, so there's still quite a, a few places where it would be more beneficial to use cash and where people want the convenience to access cash when they need it. So as a result, the ATM businesses are still a lucrative opportunity. And if you can find places where people would want more convenient access to cash than what's available, then you can have a steady stream of income in your business. You can actually find locations where you can get your return on investment fairly quickly and then it would just be profit from then on. Um, and <clears throat> it makes it really a fairly low risk investment. So what are the skills you'll need to make an ATM business work? To make an ATM business work, it's best to have empathy. You want to be able to put yourself in other people's shoes. Put yourself in the, in the property owner's shoes, in the um, store owner's shoes, in the school's shoes, wherever you decide to place your ATM. You want to put yourself in their shoes so that you can understand um, the pain points they might have either with or without an ATM and you can really negotiate good deals as a result. You also want to put yourself in the shoes of the people in the community so you can identify what would be the best location to place your ATM that would make it the most convenient for them so then they'll use it because the idea is to place the ATM so that it's in use because that's when you would make your money. So empathy is going to be really important. The next thing is the ability to do market research. You want to be able to um, you want to be able to analyze the market and what's going on in the market, what's in demand, what the supply is, who the competitors are, and that's going to be important because you want to choose a location that has a reasonable size demand and that doesn't have um, a huge supply so that you'll get regular and consistent business. Um, you'll also need social and networking skills because you might uh, use word of mouth. You might uh, actually go out and talk to people to help you identify opportunities. Um, you, you probably will be talking to the store owners, the property owners, or the people where it's likely for you to place your ATM and find out if, it, if it's a good idea. I know I did before I placed the ATM. I wanted to find out. Um, you know, does he get lots of break-ins or is there some type of risk that I should know about this location before I decide to place an ATM here? Um, you know, and just being able to talk to the person can help you to identify what things you should know and, uh, what the scenario is in that location. So, Social and networking skills are going to be really good for you um, when you are going into your ATM business. Um, then you want the willingness to maintain the machines or hire others who can. So for me, I did most of my own maintenance to the machine and I found it to be really simple after you um, study the, the, I mean, if you pick a machine, when you're picking a machine, you want to make sure that it'll be simple for you to use. Um, and you know you can ask that's another place where the social and networking skills come in when you're looking at vendors for the ATM machines you can ask about how it operates and how easy it is to repair you might even be able to look at the instruction manual virtually 
and then you can decide if it looks like it's, it's uh, feasible for you to do and then when you're starting out then you can start out with lower overhead because you are taking on the repair responsibilities and once the business becomes more profitable then you can reinvest and hire and things like that so the willingness to maintain the machines or hire others who can um, the ability to price um, so there's pr surcharges range and um, it depends on what your goals are for the machine and what your financial goals are um, and also what the what's in what the demand is in the area and how easy it is for them to go somewhere else in places like bars or shopping malls where the parking is far and there's a high demand and people um, don't have a lot of options to go somewhere else like amusement parks those places tend to charge higher with their surcharge and you can see surcharges that are six dollars or more in places like that in my area they have a um, they have an ATM at a shopping mall that um, doesn't have parking nearby and the surcharge is nearly eight dollars <laughs> Um, and I've also heard of different um, bars and things like that where you have to, I mean, they have the security guards at the entrance. They have all of this process to get in and out. And the process is so uh, like hectic to get in and out that people don't actually want to leave. So they will prefer to just pay, pay cash or get cash inside of the bar um, from an ATM machine. So in places like that, you can get a higher surcharge as a result of um, people really having a high demand for that convenience. Um, so you'll have to be able to price according to the market. Um, if you're if you're putting an ATM at a corner store and they can go maybe a couple miles and get a uh, and go to a different ATM, it might not be as likely for people to pay eight dollars for the surcharge um, in comparison to the examples that I mentioned before so you have to be reasonable and um, be reasonable based on um, the market and so the ability to maintain expenses with room enough for profit so the the um, the philosophy of living but lower means um, even if you don't have it down in your personal life, it's really important to have it down in your business. So you want to, um, you might not start out with, uh, you know, the neon colored receipt paper and all these other fancy things, depending on what budget you start with. And, um, but sometimes, you know, entrepreneurs go overboard with choosing their expenses and the the extra cost that they incur really doesn't inflate the return at all so you want to be careful with maintaining your expenses and leaving enough room for profit um, some some like if if the market is demanding improvements then like analyze it and see if there's room for you to make the cost improvement and to still get your return back but um, you know you have to have that ability to maintain your expenses with room enough for profit. Um, the skill to negotiate. So this one goes back to empathy, being able to put yourself in other people's shoes. Once you put yourself in, in the, um, other people's shoes, then you can, um, you can negotiate better because you can see from their vantage point what pros and cons they might have and then you can make a deal that's fair and that is reasonable to the both parties sometimes it won't be possible being honest um, sometimes people are just completely unreasonable but um, in most cases you'll be able to negotiate if you practice empathy and if you put yourself in their shoes and try to see from their vantage point and make a fair win-win deal and finally, the ability to work with legal professionals to create good contracts. Now, when you are placing your ATM, um, whether you're doing a lease to own, 
whether you are split in the surcharge or anything like that is best to put it on paper and to create a contract sometimes business deals go sour and um, you have to be able to have the written contract um, in order to um, get justice at times so it's really important that you um, that you think about the process and that you you um, handle it business professional regardless of if you feel really comfortable in the situation or not um, so next what are the costs involved with an ATM business so to start an ATM business it's important it's important to start with the minimum viable funnel this is my recommendation and test whether you'll enjoy the business and scale once you've proven that the concept works for you I've seen people who do their business plan and then they uh, they have in their business plan that they need 15 uh, you know ATMs and they want to spend thirty thousand forty thousand dollars to start this business and they've never done it before they don't know if they would actually enjoy it um, they don't know if um, they don't they don't know how to make it work and so what happens is they'll have all this money and then it can go sour because either they don't enjoy it or they didn't figure it out um, they didn't realize the strengths and weaknesses that they needed the quirks that they needed to work out before scaling so I really I really recommend that you start off with the minimum viable funnel and basically you keep the um, you experiment you try it out you test it out you see if this is a good fit for you first by starting small and then once you've tested and started small you kind of have a, a groove or a process then you take that process and scale it out um, so my recommendation is that you get your legal contracts um, I have here that that will be four hundred dollars a year and I'm really going based off of um, rocket lawyers membership um, they'll help you with your contracts they can also review your contracts uh, get a legal professional to review your contracts I have a full review on rocket lawyers so you can see inside of the membership and how it goes um, they also will give you discounts when you go with a lawyer that's in their network um, the first um, consultation they give it to you for free and for each new issue so let's say for example um, you do your free consultation to talk to a lawyer about um, placing a brand new ATM and so they give you advice and if you decide you know what I need more consultation on this same issue then they give you 40% off of hiring a lawyer inside in their network so I really like Rocket Lawyer. I think it's best to have a lawyer in your back pocket or in your Rolodex so that when issues come up, you can ask about what the law says about it and feel that peace of mind that you're doing things the right way. So you can go to howtoentrepreneur.org slash Rocket Lawyer if you're interested in trying them out. Um, they do have a free trial. And um, so, yeah how to entrepreneur.org slash rocket lawyer I'll include the information here on the post and I'll include the URL or the link to this post in the description box so that you can stop by and check out any resources that I mentioned in the video um, also you'll need sufficient money to put inside of the machine if you're an independently owned ATM owner then the money inside of the machine will be your money so um, if you put too small of an amount inside of the machine then you'll have to go back and keep refilling um, more often and if they run out quickly <laughs> if they run out quickly and the money it, it takes sometimes it takes a day or more to get your money back um, through the credit card processor that depending on the credit card processor and how you have things set up so if your money runs out in one in one day and uh, you haven't <laughs> and 
you haven't received the money back, then the machine would not be operable. So you have to have enough money. I have here a thousand or more dollars, but it really is going to depend on how much traffic is in a location and what the demand is. Um, in my instance, um, my ATM was located right across from a, pub, a private school that only accepted cash. So when people would come to the ATM, they were taking out hundreds of dollars at a time. So um, I, I, people weren't coming for just twenty dollars or um, or something like that. And you can set limits, you can set withdrawal limits and things like that. But still. Um, you really want to service the demand that you have and if that's the case where people are taking out larger sums of money then you have to have um, the money to cover that so sufficient money to put inside the machine is going to be important um, you also will need an ATM machine on standby so once you've negotiated the contract then you can uh, you know which ATM you're gonna put there you know how much it costs you know how um, how to schedule the placement and all of those details and then you can just purchase it and get it installed so um, I have that the ATM cost between two thousand and five thousand because when I looked around at different ATM vendors that was approximately the cost so um, now the two thousand dollar ones are very basic and the five thousand dollar ones have more features so um, it would be up to you to decide which one is most appropriate for the location where you're placing the ATM. Then next you have receipt paper. You're going to want to have a uh, receipt paper. Sometimes the machine will come with it, and uh, but you still want to have extra just to make sure that you can refill whenever it's needed. Um, then you'll need office supplies. Um, there's all kinds of things that you'll have to do in the office, uh, whether it's writing checks, whether it's dealing with vendors, or um, different things. So you'll need your office supplies in order to um, do all of your office work and your management work. Um, and then a website. A website can really add credibility. It can also serve as a lead generation or lead conversion tool. So a website, um, some people use their websites more like a business card. Um, they might have white papers or different content on the website that um, helps to build trust with potential customers or um, just lets people know about the business. And then some people have a full-fledged um, lead generation, lead conversion system on their website where they're attracting new customers, they're attracting leads, and they're even converting leads to phone calls, emails, or um, or purchases, full-fledged buys. So that's also a possibility for you. And then you have uh, business cards and brochures. So um, um, going back to the website, I didn't mention the price, $400 a year, and that's um, including the domain and the hosting. So um, the domain and the hosting, usually you pay for the storage of your intellectual property, your content, your work, um, your writing, your images, all of that intellectual property that will be owned by your business. You'll need to pay for that to be stored online so that whenever um, people search for um, the information you have on your website, it loads um, your website and you'll pop up in the search results. So um, that is hosting. And uh, so that can cost uh, the website and hosting, I would say that costs about $400 a year because the, um, the hosting companies that I recommend, that's approximately the cost. Um, so business cards and brochures, um, those are for you to hand out so people can know more about your business, read more about um, what you do, and learn about uh, how you do it and all that stuff. So just to build brand awareness, to start getting more interest and um, more people into your sales pipeline. So at the low end, I'd say an ATM business will probably cost you around $4,000 to get started. Then once you're earning from your first machine, 
you can reinvest into growing your business or you can take money from an alternative source like if you have a job or if you um, if you have another business or something like that you can take the money from an alternative source and you can grow your business you can even um, use loans or lines of credit or different things like that if that's the route you want to go and you can use those and grow your business so when you reinvest it's probably best to reinvest into um, finding more locations purchasing more machines advertising or hiring help as you might need it so what are the steps involved in starting an ATM business so these are the steps I would recommend that you take with starting the minimum viable business and then with scaling the business out so um, um, the steps are number one to validate your idea and this is where you're filling out not just does the business work because we know that the ATM business works there are people that are making really good money running an ATM business but it's different whether it'll work for you subjectively and that's will you enjoy it that's um will you um just will, will you enjoy it that's um whether it's leveraging your skills well whether it's leveraging your time well it's you validating your idea um, so you want to be careful to choose a good location good property owner you'll enjoy working with and to use your first placement to really fill out whether you enjoy it or not so that's the first step step number two is to prioritize your business so after you've decided this is something that you 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 can do and that you enjoy and that um, getting to then you have to carve out time for the business um, you may want to reorganize your schedule and take time away from other things so that you can do those four tasks we talked about before acquiring the work doing the work managing the work and strategizing about the work and then number three you want to build your brand so your brand is, is how other people perceive your business so you want people to perceive your ATMs as safe and convenient resources to get cash when they need it and it takes time and attention to build brand awareness getting a logo color palette and creating a professional image can help to manage your impression then as your business grows you can also expect referral traffic and sales as a result of the brand that you've built so more people will say hey did you know there's an ATM over there um, or some of the business owners will say I really like working with this company um, to for my ATM and you'll start to get more referrals as a result of you um, doing a good job so check out the free logo services if you're interested in uh, and getting a logo or in getting promo products and brochures and business cards and things like that um, so I have the information here um, now free logo services is a deluxe company so often if you've watched others of my videos you've seen that I often refer people to deluxe so you can go to how entrepreneur.com or dot org slash deluxe and um, see more information about them they have lots of custom promo products and uh, forms purchase agreements different types of specialty forms and they also um, have professionals that can help you with things like um, your graphic design or um, different small business needs that you might have over time so um, you can go to howtoentrepreneur.org slash deluxe for more information about that. Um, so number four, start getting leads and traffic. So um, choosing an optimal location is going to be a major key to getting the traffic and the leads for your ATM business. But another major component will be initiating activities that build brand awareness and trust. So you can place your ATM and you can place a sign letting people know from outside of the location that there's an ATM there. But then from there, it's going to be up to you to also do some type of either advertising or networking or um, activities to let people know that there's an ATM in the location. 
So sometimes the, um, the property owners or um, the business that you've placed the ATM at will help with the marketing of the ATM. And sometimes just by way of them already having lots of traffic, um, you can, your ATM can benefit and the word of mouth will spread. Um, but it's still important as an entrepreneur to initiate some of that um, brand awareness. So you can set up a website that informs customers and property owners about your company that lets them know about the safety measures and payment arrangements that facilitates advertising and affiliate marketing deals and even lets them know what to do if they're interested in getting an ATM place with you. You can also use your website for training. Um, maybe you um, maybe you decide to do the business in a more hands-off way. It's a lease to own business. So you can set up your website with the training on how to maintain the ATM or different things so that you're leveraging your time and making it an even more efficient process for you. So I have this um, this here where you can actually build a website right here you enter the name that you want um, so let's say for example my ATM business and it'll tell you if the name is available and then it would start you a WordPress website WordPress is the content management system that runs majority of the websites online um, it's very very customizable so you can add lots of features onto your WordPress website so um, but this plugin this installation on uh, how to entrepreneur will um, cause will create a WordPress website for you um, on a subdomain then if you decide you really like the page builder and you like um, operating the website then you can transfer it onto a domain that you own and it will be your own property. So um, definitely check this out because it's, it's good for you to set up a website for you to learn how to operate it and all that stuff so that you can, um, you can build more brand awareness and possibly even generate leads from your website. So you can get the training, the support, and the tools to build your website at howtoentrepreneur.org. Um, you can start at my free course and then you'll get more details about how to get training and all of that stuff to really build out your website and to get more customers coming to your website from there. So number five, um, you want to convert the traffic after you are um, getting people coming to your business and they might be emailing you, giving you phone calls, they might be filling out your contact form on your website, um, inquiring, um, they might be coming into the store and using your machine. So once that's happening, you want to convert that traffic into customers. So once you have people coming in to you interested in what you're offering, whether it's withdrawing money from your machine, setting up an affiliate partnership, or getting a machine, you'll have to have a process to turn that attention into cash. Now, most people are familiar with using an ATM machine, so it'll be fairly easy to get your surcharges that way. Um, if it's for affiliate partnership or for, um, for getting an ATM place, then that may be a little bit of a different process. So you'll still have to... Um, figure out the process that you will um, take people through in order to convert the traffic into customers. Your website can surely help with that and it can help to explain your processes, give them contact information, and even initiate the follow-up process. Number six, form your business legally. So once you're sure you'll pursue the ATM business, then it's time to incorporate so you can minimize the tax and the legal liability. Now, I recommend doing this at this point because I've seen entrepreneurs who they set up their business legally, they've incorporated as an LLC or as a corporation, and then they decide that they don't actually want to do the business. And they have all of these letters in the mail from different places um, related to their compliance but they are not actually do operating the business. 
So I recommend after you're confident that this is something you're really going to do, that you go ahead and incorporate. Incorporation services can help to give you peace of mind that your paperwork has been filed right. So I recommend using an incorporation service if possible. Um, incorporation services can be very reasonably priced. Um, Swift Filings charges about $50 for filing your incorporation with their basic package and then they have other packages where they'll they help you with your operating agreements and they help you with your meeting minutes and different things that you'll have to have so I recommend checking them out and I have a full review with a video here that you can check out to get more information about them I also have another um, post with comparisons between some of the top five best places to incorporate online so if you're leaning more towards a place like ink file or corpnet or another place then this will give you information to help choose um, between the pros and cons of each of them to decide which is the most appropriate for you number seven organize your books so it's important to organize your books to make sure you're balancing your expenses and income well and to make decisions strategically rather than optimistically. So your financial data can serve as a map to help you decide what to do going forward if you have the right tools in place. So for the ATM business, I recommend you using QuickBooks. However, if you run a small to medium sized operation, you might also look into FreshBooks. They both have free trials and you can try them out to see which one um, works best for you if you go to how to entrepreneur.org slash quickbooks um, then you can get all of the special um, offers that come along with um, my referrals also if you go to how to entrepreneur.org slash freshbooks the same would apply there I have four reviews of both quickbooks and freshbooks that you can take a look at um, if you're interested in learning the pros and cons of each of those softwares so I have that enclosed here Number eight, you want to get your office supplies. So you'll be surprised how many things come up in business between managing your paperwork to communicating with vendors and so on and so on. So it's going to be important to have the office supplies you need to maintain your workflow and to make things easy for you. So the office supplies may include things like your pens, pencils, desk, chairs, um, Things like G Suite, which would be how you store your documents that you don't want people to be served on your website. Um, um, you might also want to collaborate with people um, and G Suite will really help you with collaborating on your documents. Um, and then there's also eVoice or Grasshopper, either of the two, but eVoice is my number one recommendation if you want a designated business line so a lot of businesses or startup entrepreneurs when they start up um, they have their personal cell phone but you don't want your business uh, people to call your personal cell phone number because then it'll be hard to distinguish how you should answer the phone you don't want to answer the phone as if you're talking to family or friends so a lot of um, entrepreneurs will get a separate phone line so that they can handle their business affairs um, professionally and I recommend eVoice for doing that they have a lot of really nice features that um, I think you would appreciate so definitely check them out I have a full review on them as well so number eight you systemize your process so once you've been operational for a little while you'll be able to see the tasks that generate a consistent flow of potential customers the methods that keep your machines operating best, and the strategies that work best in growing your company. So it's important to be consistent and to systemize these processes so that you're building a reliable and a trustworthy brand. So number nine, you reinvest and you scale. So once you get money beyond your expenses, it's important to set aside some time for or set aside some of the money and some of the time that you have for growth don't spend it all so um, you'll need to Im continue improving your skills hire new people 
give training to people, place more machines, and maintain work and capital for just in case. So I have some resources that you may want to look into. Um, Udemy is a good resource for getting professional training, like if you need more help with your accounting, or maybe you decide you want to use Excel, or maybe you want to learn how to use QuickBooks, or maybe you want to learn how to use payroll software. Udemy is a great place, a great resource to get some of that training. Um, if you decide to check them out, you can go to howtoentrepreneur.org slash Udemy and check them out. And you'll see that they have lots of great courses to help you with your professional training. And um, Zenefits is an, another option. If you decide it's time for you to hire and um, you want to pay people, in a way that that helps you to maintain your compliance with all the federal government requirements and also that um, maybe you just need advice about how to do it how to do your onboarding and all that stuff Zenefits gives you both the software for you to do your training um, for you to um, do your payroll for you to do time and attendance and all those things um, and they also give you consulting so that if you are confused about how to move forward, how to grow your company, how to hire, all those things, then you can get your questions answered and make sure you stay compliant. Um, Gusto is a, an alternative, but they don't have the consulting piece that I think is really important. So the goal of this video was to show you how to start an ATM business. And I'm, I know it was a lot of information that I gave you throughout this video um, and I'm hoping you're able to use the information to choose if this business is right for you and um, if you're looking for more explanations for how to grow your business I explain all of these concepts plus more in my um, free business growth e-course and my full video course on how to create your minimum viable business plan at Wealthy Affiliates so you can get access to my e-course and all of my free bonuses by checking it out here so um, you can get access to the e-course here or you can go to the top menu and where it says free course then you can check out the e-course here so that's all I have for this video I'm really hoping that it was helpful for you if it was please leave a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more videos like this where I do product and service reviews as well as tutorials to help you grow a business from idea to enterprise, then please subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon so you'll be notified when I upload new videos. So I really look forward to seeing you around on future videos. And that's all I have for this one. Have a great day. Bye.